tasting, which is why you're all here, right? Yeah, well, it's, almost, it's almost noon. Okay, so I would like, we're going to take a little bit of break, but before we do that, I want to just, again, remind you that wine is, should not be intimidating, and the more you know, the more you're going to feel comfortable with it, and the way you feel comfortable with it is tasting it. So we're going to talk about tasting opportunities in a minute and uh, why you should do it. Because how often do you get to go out and taste things for a very small fee? Um, when you go to a winery or you go to a vintner or you go to a liquor store and they're doing a tasting, sometimes it's, it's free. You go in and you get to sample things and you get to experiment because you would never go out and buy a huge bottle of something if you don't know you like it or not. It's not very economical. Right? So tasting's wonderful. And what we're going to do right now is my wonderful helpers <laughs> are going to be bringing you two glasses of wine, an A and a B, two for each of you. They're two different wines. The goal is not to say, oh, this one's better. Okay? We're looking at the differences between the two. We're going to do an actual wine tasting together. There are some snacks. And these are great. Pretzels are wonderful. They will cleanse the palate because of the salt. Um, I would not do cheese or anything like that. If you're going to do an official wine tasting, the cheese will kill your palate before you can taste the next. I mean, it's gone. Um, so pretzels are very good. Uh, oyster crackers are really good. So if you're going to do a tasting with your friends, make sure you have those things. These are the six steps we're going to use to look at our wines. We're going to see, swirl, sniff, sip, swish, and savor. We're not going to spit. <laughs> you can spit, but not today. We're at the library. Or no, we're not at the library. We're at a library function. You don't spit at a library function. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go through each one separately. We're going to start with A. So get your A out. All right. We're going to look at it. Now, people are, you're doing it already. Ugh. Ah, you're holding it up to the light. What kind of light bulb's up there? Uh-huh, uh-huh, hmm. It could be night light, bright white, star light, movie night, whatever light color they have. There's like 16 different colors of white now in the bulbs, right? And you have no idea what it really looks like. So honestly, what you need is a piece of white paper or a white napkin. That's the best way to use it. Okay, um, and I, I apologize, I don't have white napkins for you, but usually if it's, if it's white, you hold it up against your bowl. That actually helps a lot. Yeah, hold it up against the bowl or, or a white something, and you will be able to see the color a lot better. Now, if you're outside, it's perfect. Daylight outside, natural light is the best way to do it. So we're looking at white. Now, what do we see? There's reds, there's violets, there's purples, there's rubies. What color would you call this? That's pretty dark, right? I'd call it a deep ruby or a deep purple. That's what I would call it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first thing we do. We appreciate the color of it because all reds are not the same. They're all different color red. Now, here's something that you probably don't know about. How old is the wine? And it's going to be hard to do in your little plastic cup, which is why I have my glass here. Your, your wine has age on it. This wine has age on it. And if it's really, really old, you'll be able to see something called an aura. Now, you won't probably see it on your wine. It's not that old. But here is a red wine glass. Oh, here's, a, here's red wine in a glass. I'm just going to tip it. And what happens is there's a fine line that goes around the entire edge of it but it's a little cloudy, okay? It's not very distinctive. It's not very definitive. It's a haze. And the more that's hazy, the more that wine is separated and it's older. This wine was actually 16 years old. So 16 year old red. And you can see there's just this aura around it. It's not clean, okay? So when whites, get aged, they darken. They get gold and brown. When reds age, they get lighter. Okay? 
So, does this one have age? A little bit, not too much. Oh, yeah, okay, not too much. Okay, so we're gonna swirl next. Now, this is kinda hard to do with your little Dixie cup. So that's why I again brought the glass. People, 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 people. <sighs> Be gentle. This wine's gone through a lot. It's been stomped, it's been thrown in a bucket, gum, the whole thing, right? So you don't have to do this. You're not working out, okay? What you're gonna do, most people, they do this, and that's just fraught with peril, because that means dry cleaning, <laughs> all right? Especially if you've had a couple, then you get very, very, like, woo, we're swirling. No, don't do that. So you put it down on the table. That's why you have a table in front of you. That's why I asked. Please make sure there's tables in front of you. You're going to put your finger around it, and you're going to swirl it like that. Just ever so gently. Just ever so, ever so gently. And what that does, it introduces oxygen into the wine because the wine's been sleeping, right? Well, it's had a good hour um, opening up already. So it probably has opened up pretty well at this point. But when you first open up a bottle of wine, you want to swirl it a little bit just to get things going. Okay. Now, it also allows things, and we're going to talk about sulfites in a little bit, to exit. Things that aren't so great. It's going to allow them to go away. Okay? It's going to feel a little fresher. Now, um, I would like you to smell it right now. Okay. And then I would like you to swirl it 10 times. And they are pretty full pours because we like you. And I'd like you to smell it again. I'll let you know. Overachiever, I'll let you know. It should smell a little different. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Now, I had the, the wine I showed you before, the wine that I opened up that was like 15, 16 years old. I was so excited because I brought a, a few hundred bottles back from Europe, and they all made it. And I was like, oh, man, I'm so excited. I'm going to open this wine. And it was 2005, and I was all excited. And I opened it up, and I poured it, and I tasted it. And I was like, oh, God, it's terrible. It's terrible. Oh, God. And I was so upset. Half an hour later, went back, tried it again. Perfect. Okay, sometimes it just needs to open up. It just needs some oxygen. It needs to breathe. So people are like, oh, my wine needs to open up. It really does. It really does, okay? Uh, especially a red. Especially a red. Okay, so um, we've swirled it. Now we're going to sniff it. Smelling is the biggest sensory that we have. We think it's the eyes. It's not. It's the nose. So I want you to get it in there. Okay, hold on. Everybody hold on. Do not take this and tilt it towards your nose. What will happen if I do that? I lose a lot of good wine in a nasal rinse. <laughs> Hold your wine in front of you. Take your little head and tilt it towards the wine. Oh, that's nice. Everybody's got it. Good. Yeah, don't do that. Go this way. Okay, you'll get a snootful. I have seen a lot of people give themselves a sinus rinse doing that. It's not, it's not pretty, especially in a restaurant. Okay, um, you can smell over a thousand things. You can only taste six. So smell is a huge, huge role in tasting wine, okay? Um, you get your nose in the glass. You take a big inhale. I like to close my eyes because I don't want that sense to kick in. So I will take a big schnoot. And then I think, what did I just smell? And I keep my eyes closed. Because if I open my eyes and I see things and I start thinking about grocery shopping and da, 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 and take the dog out and you know, no. Okay. All right, so we're sniffing, we're smelling. What do you smell? Do you smell oak? Do you smell biscuits? Do you smell leather? Do you see tobacco? Do you smell? There's all kinds of smells. 
What do you smell? You smell rose? Okay. Yeah. Plum? Yeah. Everybody's got a different nose. And the thing is, you have to train your nose to know what a certain wine varietal is going to smell like. And if it doesn't smell like that, then it's got to be something else. So has anybody ever seen the documentary called Psalm? S-O-M-M. -M. Yeah. Yeah. I actually studied with one of the master psalms. He's very, very funny. Um, and it tells you all about what it's like to become a master sommelier. It's very, very tough. There's only about like 150 in the world. Um, a grandmaster. It's very, very competitive. Um, so it is, uh, it's an art. You have to train your nose to smell certain things. So, okay. So we've smelled it. I'm smelling a little blackberry and just a tiny bit of spice. Just a tiny bit of spice. Does anybody smell v vanilla? No? Okay. 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 So, if you really want to study smells, this is something called le nez de vin, the nose of wine. It is very expensive. You can get a smaller version. It is handmade. There are 48 cents. Uh, I'm sorry, 54 cents. Everything from licorice to leather to dirt. These are all official smells in the wine world. And every one of these vials has a smell in it. You open it up, you smell it, you look at the card, you put it back. You can only do like five at a time because your nose just gets super, super tired. I'm terrible at it. My husband's very good. He's a certified beer judge. So he, he actually uses my wine kit to study for his, his beer judging. Okay? So this is a lovely gift if you know somebody who's really, really into wine. It is quite pricey. It's about $400. Yeah, I know. Um, but, and I have one, and it's, it's wonderful. It was a lovely gift, but I would have liked like the eight. <laughs> Just the eight one would have been really good. So they come in all different sizes. All right, so we've smelled it. Now, when you sip it, I would like you to take a tiny sip and just hold it in your mouth. Don't swallow. Okay? And I want you to swish it around so it goes all over your mouth, even this part here, in between your teeth and your lip. You can't do that with a big gulp. Mm. And now you swallow. Okay. Increasing the surface area of your mouth, you get a lot of different flavors. It's not just going right down. I get a little tingly action going on. That's the alcohol. It's about 13 and a half, 14 percent. That's average alcohol in wine. So it's definitely got that. Um, it's warmer now. Um, sweet tastes sweet, dry tastes dry. I think this is a little on the dry side. People agree? Okay, sweet is usually right here on your tongue, tip of your tongue. That will engage if it's sweet. Dry, you'll feel further back. Okay? Tannins, which we'll talk about, right around here. And if it's really high alcohol, my cheeks will tingle, 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 tingle. Happy tingle. <laughs> Happy tingle. Okay. Um, I think it's a full-bodied wine. Full body. Think of skim milk and whole milk. Whole milk is full-bodied. Skim milk will taste thin right, like watery. This doesn't taste watery to me. It's, a, it's still there. I can feel it. it's still there. So I think it's a full-bodied wine. It's got some good structure to it. It's definitely dry. I'm tasting blackberry. Cherry. Yep. Okay. Now, let's savor. After you swallow it, does it linger? Do you still taste it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and if it's really, if it's really prevalent, um, it, it's called mouthfeel, and it's called a long finish. So if it's still with you, like I can still taste the flavor, not the alcohol, I can still taste the flavor, that means it's got a very nice long finish. It's staying with you, which is lovely because then you don't have to take a sip so quick. 
it's still with you. All right. So I love long finish wines. Um, the we talked about high alcohol uh, on this one. I it's almost like a mocha or a cocoa at the end for me. Very slight, very slight. Yep. Does anybody else taste that? No. A little chocolate on the end. Yeah. Well, you're working on it, right? Okay, you're working on it. Okay. Okay, so um, I definitely feel uh, there's some mocha on it. It's a nice lingering. It's definitely dark fruit, maybe a little spice, but definitely dry. Okay. Does anybody taste anything else on this one? No? A little buttery? Okay. Maybe baking? A little baking spice, buttery? Just Is it smooth or silky? Okay, silky smooth. Okay. That's more of a, um, not necessarily a, a taste, it's more of a, a feel. Yeah, it's a, it's a big wine. It's a big wine. I like it. I like Who I likes this? Herbs. herbs? Yeah, a little herbaceous. Yeah. Uh, white wines have a little more herbs on them, herbaceous, green. They taste green. They taste mm -hmm. citrusy. Yeah. So how many people like it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So again, this is just going through six steps. And it will change when you eat with it. Some wines aren't supposed to be drank by themselves. This is a good food wine. This is a great food wine. Pasta, meat, even chicken, OK? Um, it's, it's a nice full-bodied red. Any Italian, anything red sauce, garlic bread, big cheeses, crackers, big cheeses, nothing delicate. We're talking kick you in your butt cheese. It's got to balance well. So this would be a really good red for that. Yes? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's actually supposed to taste better <laughs> the more you drink it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It tastes, it, there, it, do, it does have acidity on it, and some people don't like the acidity. It tastes a little bitter at the end. That's because of the tannin structure. But yeah, so this is a great food wine. Okay? So let's do B. Put down your A. B. All right, now we're going to go through. We're going to see it color-wise. They're very similar, don't you think? I think it's darker? A little darker. Yeah, I, th yeah, I think you're right. I think it is a little darker. Okay, now we're going to swirl it. Now, again, these wines have had plenty of time to open up, but we're just going to give it a little help. Ooh. Mm. Sniff it. Very different, huh? What do you smell? Ooh. What do you smell? Unless you say a pair of tennis shoes, there's no, ans no bad answer. There's no bad answer. I feel like dark berry. I have, no, I have a very bad nose, so yeah, I can't Yeah, me anything, too. So. Yeah. That's why I got to go right in there. Oh, Penn State, yay. That's where I got my doctorate from. Okay, it's different, isn't it? A little different. A licorice. Oh, licorice. I see like a darker fruit. Like dark, dark fruit. Um, um, I smell a little wood, like cedar, like a wood, like a little wood. Yeah, and that's fine. That's the beauty of wine. It collecting all these things. But how do you break up all those different smells? You got to keep thinking. You got to keep drinking. You got to keep tasting and and trying. But it's very different. Now take your A and smell your A. And then smell your B. Very different. Yeah, see? OK, excellent. I love it. All right, so now we're going to sip our B. Make sure you got your B. Take a sip, swish it around, get it in there. Don't gargle it. I mean, please. 
Ooh, it is. Somebody said it was smoother. Delicate. Fruitier. Ooh, it's nice. Now, the other one was nice, too. That one had more tannins on it. This one's got softer tannins. Tannin is the grip of a wine. Okay, tannin is the grip of a wine. So you can have soft tannins. Soft tannins, think of velvet. Think of velvet. It's got a nap to it, right? Velvet has a nap to it, but it's soft. You can feel the fibers going back and forth. High tannins are like corduroy. It's got a nap. It's a little rougher. That's what tannins are in your mouth. Okay, that's the best way I can describe a tannin. Soft is velvet, higher tannins, harder tannins are corduroy. This is definitely velvet. It's very easy drinking. Very easy drinking. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we swished, right? We swished, we savored. Um, again, I, I, jammy, something jammy, but soft, not too sweet, medium balanced, um, good weight. Um, it was very appealing. All right, so how many people like B? Okay. If you had to pick, which one would you want? A's? Raise your hand. Or would you pick the B? Okay. Well, guess what? You just went through an official tasting. Okay. And because of that, you're now better educated about what you like to drink. Now, are you going to drink the same wine all the time? No. You're going to have it for different occasions. This wine is very nice on its own. It can also be done, I think, with fruits, with softer cheeses, um, more entertaining out on the patio. Um, I think this would be lovely chilled in the summer, not too cold, chilled, bring it out. I think it would be lovely as a chilled red in the summer. Very refreshing, fruity, vibrant, very good stuff. Okay, so before I tell you what it is, did you know <laughs> spitting? Spitting is completely acceptable, not here, because you need a spittoon. A spittoon looks like an ice bucket. It's usually silver, and whenever you go to a professional tasting, there will be a few on the table. It is perfectly acceptable to take a taste, swish it, and then spit it. Because otherwise, it's going to be a long night, sister. OK? And um, if you're not used to spitting, which I hope you're not, you need a little napkin or something to like pat yourself, you know, or a hanky or something. Because then you walk around with this red stuff all over you. It's not attractive, let me say. So, so it is required for large tastings. You are expected to spit. Um, it is perfectly acceptable. You dump your glass into it or you spit into the spittoon and it's good to have a napkin on hand. If you've ever seen anybody do it, it is an art form and it is kind of silly. <laughs> kind of silly looking. <laughs> okay, here we go. You ready? Everybody sitting down? Oh, good. A. a. We had more people like B, I recall, right? Yeah. Hmm. A is a blend. It is a 2022 Dancing Flame from Chile. It is a blend. It is 70% Cabernet Sauvignon. 20% Caminier, one of my favorite wines, and 10% Syrah or Syrahs, okay? And that's probably where that bite came from. That little acidity probably came from that because Caminier is very smooth. Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon is very dry. So you can see how all those wines together would come up with what you had in A. B, black box Merlot. <laughs> You kids. It's actually a very good wine. It is a very good wine. Don't make fun of the box. Okay. This is a 2021 
okay? It's a 2021, so it's three years, two, three years old by now. Um, it's uh, very good. Um, I like it because it's very silky. It goes with everything. It's a great house wine. It's a really great house wine. So, um, A, how much do you think that was? Now, we got a budget. Uh, well, no, we're doing A, which is a bottle. Okay, we got all kinds of. This is from Aldi's. Five ninety nine. Yeah, right. I mean, come on. It's a great wine for $5.99. Now you're all like, oh, it's perfectly good, right? Now like, oh, I, I, can, I can deal with those tannins, tannin schmannins, $5.99. <laughs> no, it's, it's a very, very nice wine. It's a very nice wine. It is a blend. It's from the Deo Val Central, excellent winery, excellent winery area in Chile. Um, and it's called Dancing Flame, and it is from 2022. So black box, as you know, you can get at Walmart for $19, but there are four bottles in the box which turns out to be $4.74 a bottle. You cheapos, you like the boxed wine. Now here's the thing about boxed wine. It is perfectly acceptable to have. It is actually very economical to have because you don't deal with bottles. These are expensive. The corks are expensive. The labels are expensive. The process to put this together is very expensive. Whereas you can get a box, it will last forever. It'll last a month. And it is, it, it's less waste. It's ergonomically sealed. And then when you get to the very end, you open up the box, you cut off the corner, and you pour the rest into your glass. You're fine. <laughs>